All right. Whew. Welcome, everybody. So we are here for a podcast because Sister Arivia here has come to some enlightenment. She has discovered something and she would like to share it with everybody. So, oh, and I'd like to introduce this, my wife, Kafaya. So she's here and Arivia asked her to be here too. So we're going to be discussing what Arivia has found. So what have you found? Okay. Um, on yesterday and at our time of recording, I committed an error. And um, we will be discussing about this error in which I have committed. Now, as many of you have been watching us, uh, I am a student here at the House of Instruction in the beautiful city of Amman, Jordan. And um, during my time of study, uh, this error was pointed out to me. Now, we have been going over in all of our previous podcasts um, of the books of Exodus, and now we're in Leviticus. And it speaks about, in Leviticus chapter 4, about what is required when you commit a sin inadvertently. <clears throat> and um, what, what you must do when you do commit these sins. And one of the biggest things that I am learning here at the House of Instruction is using the law to be your mirror. Because before you can judge anyone else, uh, you yourself have to judge yourself. Now, the error in which I have committed is related to the scripture uh, from the manuscript of Prophet Isaiah, chapter 3, verse starting at verse 14. All right, so let's read it. And for those of you who are um, watching the video, um, you'll be able to read with us. You'll see the words on the screen. So uh, just read it. And, um, I don't have, it's not in this book. I don't have my phone with me. Um, hold on. No yeah. problem. Yes, if you can pull it up, please. All right. Oh, we'll be right back. Yes. Uh, okay, we back. All right, so we've got the uh, the manuscript of Isaiah up. Now you'll notice that I always say manuscript because the difference between what we are reading, what we are reading is fixed. It, it, it has not been changed. It was actually preserved. So there's always a preservation. Unlike scriptures, which people have tailored. Mm. Right? So you have the homosexual scriptures. They take the Bible and they tailor it and make it homosexual. You got the women's versions and they needed to be loosed. So you have the loosed women's version. Then... <laughs> You have the NIV, the CEB, the LBTG, and all the other alphabet versions, <laughs> right? But a Targum is not like those. It is directly translated. And so this uh, manuscript that we're reading, right, we're going to see what Isaiah says, and it is vastly different. When I say vast, I mean it's very small, it is different in that it's given details. It explains itself so that the reader gains the information and can change or conform themselves to the instruction. So we're going to take a look at the manuscript of Isaiah. And this is not what we normally do. We stick to the law and reading the law because the law is the teacher to really get us into... Um, the law is the teacher to get us into the the changes that the, the big changes that need to be made corporately. But this one was so important because we'll get to it later in the law. Like it does pop up. We're in the book of Leviticus. We will get to this point where it does mention what she's about to read. So we're going to read this and then we're going to take um, notes. So have a pen and paper ready because. We're going to be looking at 
some very interesting details. Yes. And, you know, this is especially geared to the daughters of Zion from younger to older. You know, this is a requirement for all of us. So, you know, share with your sisters, your friends, um, your mothers, your aunties. Uh, so they too will have an understanding of what is required of us as daughters of Zion. Starting at verse 14 of chapter three, Isaiah. Yeah, y'all will bring into judgment the elders and commanders of his people. Okay. So first things first, in context, the most high is saying for those who are in charge and governings over his people. Now, if you've read the law, the most high has a problem with his people not being governed by his law, right? So the law mandates who's supposed to be in charge over his people. And if they are not in charge and if they are holding uh, holy and consecrated items hostage, that the Most High's wrath will not be poured out. So now we've read this law to the nations and now this issue comes up and he says he's bringing the government's that are ruling over his peoples wherever they are in the diaspora, in the scatterings, all right? You have robbed my people. The spoil of the poor is in your houses. What do you mean by impoverishing my people? And you're making the needy turn this way and that in their legal suit. So they're making people turn to illegal, unlawful options in their legal suits, right? So uh, homosexual marriages, this is an abomination to us as a people by the law of our God. But if you speak out about it, you turn against them in legal suits by our proclamation of saying that we are the people of the book and we do recognize our identity and that we should be governed by the law of our book because of the Jews, you turn against us in legal suits. So now the Mosai is asking, what gives you the right to do that? Okay, so we're going to continue says Yaya Allah of hosts. And Yaya said, because the daughters of Zion are haughty. Okay, so now that the Most High has expressed his anger, <laughs> that you've robbed us and taken all of our sacred things and gained all the wealth and kept us impoverished. You haven't allowed us to get a foothold or even the opportunity to come back as a people, right? You've even given our nation to other peoples who are not of this land, right? He's saying, now that the last straw is you are causing the daughters of Zion to be haughty, right? Now, some of you may think you know what haughty is, but let's see what the Most High's definition of haughty is. The word haughty means arrogantly superior and disdainful and yes ladies we are guilty of it daughters of zion we have become this especially against our men of israel okay so haughtiness is to feel like you are superior you are the prize now that you have this you've become haughty now, there's a sign for this. Let's see what the manuscript says. They walk with uplifted neck. So, you know, I don't know how that works, but they have an uplifted neck. <laughs> so, you know, if you touch your neck, right, my neck is out, right? 
we have to see what the Most High is talking about. We're going to gain some more context. So they're walking around and they have an uplifted neck. Okay, we'll see what else he's talking about to see if we can put together what the Most High's definition of haughty is. Okay, and walk oogling with their eyes. So now they're oogling with their eyes. So they have their uplifted necks <laughs> and they're oogling, they're ogling with their eyes. Okay, before we continue, I want to know. What else the manuscript have they say? So we have the neck, we have the eyes, and what else? And with ring locks of hair. And they have decorated hair. How is this connected to being haughty? These the three things. Mm -hmm. So what else are they doing? And inciting with their feet. Inciting with their feet. Now, I know it says something different if you have the King James Version of this scripture of Isaiah chapter 3, but let's just take a look at the definitions of these words. Okay. Well, I just read what haughty meant, arrogantly superior and disdainful. This is a crime. Uplifted neck, which means placed in a higher position, raised. Our necks are visible. They're visible. So because you're walking around and your necks can be seen, there's something wrong. Oogling eyes means stare at. In a lecherous, which means lustful desire, manner, which causes seducing of so, men. So you're looking lustfully with your eyes in a seducing manner. So your necks are being able to be seen and you're giving a seductive look with your eyes. Okay, what's the next part? Ring locks of hair, which is marked with or encircled by a ring or ring. So your hair is being seen, is being noticed. So your decorated beautiful locks of hair are now being seen publicly. Do you know what this sounds like? This is a thirst trap. <laughs> this is a beauty picture you're taking. Your hair is out. You're decorated nicely. Your neck is out. You're presenting a beautiful face and a seductive look in your eyes. And you're presenting it to the world. This is haughtiness. And to, in, to, 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 to close it all off, he says the word inciting with their feet. What does the word inciting mean? Encourage or stir up for violent or unlawful behavior. So with your feet, you are leading people down a violent and or unlawful behavior. And what do we have today? We have young girls and they are leading people into all kinds of snares and traps into unlawful behavior, both fornication and adultery. This is, this is today. So you're posting your pictures and videos to incite men to lust after you, to give you attention. This is unlawful. Mm -hmm. This is unlawful. And then everybody is doing it to make it seem like this is okay, right? Then it is, you have a problem because it says you are in a, a position of power. So you, you want to dictate to a man what he's allowed to like and what he's allowed to have when God has already said that he's what he's permitted to have mm -hmm. and what that he's permitted to what he's permitted to like. Mm -hmm. You, you want to regulate the relationship and determine whether or not the relationship is terminable by you. This is not correct. You're not allowed to lawfully uh, divorce a man. You're not even supposed to be given to yourself to a man that is not your husband, but you're doing it anyway. If a man is not monogamous to you, 
or faithful to you, you want the right to discard him as if you are the one in the position of power and you believe this is correct. This is the way it is today. Well, let's see what 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 did you discover? Well, what I had discovered, because I've committed a crime, we're going to go into the law as well as what the judgment is when you commit this crime. Yesterday, when we had filmed, I had my head uncovered. Um, I wrapped a scarf around my neck, but my locks were out. <laughs> and as I was reading this, I recognized, oh my goodness, I did this. I sinned. I erred, whether it was intentionally or not intentionally. You know, my thing was, oh, I feel like a warrior today, so I'm wearing my hair out. You know, this is what I learned because I do come from captivity. You know, I have been taught that I can choose when I can cover my hair and when I can't cover my hair. And that's not true. So I want to openly apologize to those of you who will watch this, the video from yesterday that we filmed on the book of Leviticus with my hair out and not covered up as we are required to do. This is the proper way, hair covered, neck covered, of how we as the daughters of Zion is to present ourselves, especially publicly. Now, if you're in your home, you with your family, it's okay. You can have your hair and everything out. But when you're going out, when you're around other men that may come to your house, you we must, not, not just you need, we must cover ourselves. So this hair covering, right? Mm -hmm. This covers your ring locks of hair and it also covers your neck. Yes. All right. And what about the oogling with the eyes? Because now you're modestly dressed. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. So there's going to have to be some sort of personal uh, restraint. Yes. Uh, you know, a lot of us women, especially of the West, we've been taught to look a person in their eyes, <laughs> you know, and I'm very, very guilty of that. That's how I grew up. You look a person in their eye. But when it comes to other men, tr do your best not to stare them down with your eyes, giving seducing looks to them, um, giving them the idea that they're desired or wanted by you, you know, uh, try to kind of look away a little bit sometimes. It's okay. Th this is all part of being modest. So you found modesty and the wearing of the, the hijab. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you found this in the manuscripts. Mm -hmm. Of Isaiah. Yes. And to understand about the hijab, if you, uh, in our book, if you hold this, please. In the book of Numbers, here in the Targum of Jonathan Ben Uziel. Now, you always know whenever we do our classes, the book is always right here in the lower uh, left hand corner of the screen. So, uh, this is the book we recommend you get so you can read along with us so you can see the information that's been hidden from you. Mm -hmm. Now, get this book before they take it down. Well, it doesn't really matter. I got another copy <laughs> so they can take it down. They want to. I don't really care. We have the physical book. We, I have a digital copy. Like I said, I gave this law away for free. But now we are now getting ready to see what the law says a woman is supposed to be wearing. Okay, this is in the book of Numbers, Bedman Bar, chapter 5, verse 18. And the priest shall cause the woman to stand before Yah and bind a cord over her loins and upon her breasts, because she 
should have bound her loins with a girdle and he shall uncover the woman's head because she had tied a fillet upon her hair. This is a fillet. A hajib is a fillet. So now we're in the book of Numbers, chapter 5 and verse 18. And what you are reading here is the bitter water trial, right? And what this is, is, is when a man has become jealous of his wife, but he has no proof of any wrongdoings. There is a special ceremony that must be performed to see whether or not this woman has committed any crime in secret. And it says that this woman, when she comes, she should have worn a hijab, although it's called a fillet. But if you look up fillet in the English language, you will see the covering of what a nun wears. Mm -hmm. Right? <clears throat> Which covers the neck and the hair. It is a princess's or a queen's covering. Now you understand when you say you're a daughter of Zion, you are of royal blood. You're supposed to wear the covering of a queen or a princess, which is the hijab. Being from a Middle Eastern family, the father of our culture is Abraham, and this is what he instilled in his daughters. Yes. So we found the hijab in the book of the law, and the Most High is angry with the daughters of Zion for not being compliant with this custom and tradition. They are walking around mm -hmm. with their hair out, with their necks out, and they're always looking for and looking at the fine men, whichever so man they desire or whomever they desire. So everything is become about lust. Mm -hmm. It's always about Sex, sex sells, sex over it all. Mm -hmm. So let's see what the Most High says about this now, because we understand what he meant. Mm -hmm. Now we read what the crime was. We read the law uh, that is about the crime. Now let's look at the judgment for this crime. Verse 17 so Yah will enslave the nobles of the daughters of Zion, and Yah will take away their glory. So he's going to enslave the government administrations of the daughters of Zion. So since the daughters of Zion are not under the control of the sons of Israel, and they're not under the control of the law of their God. Now he's going to enslave you, the government, for not administrating over the daughters of Zion this law. Since you will not accept the returning of them to their laws and their cultures. So now he's going to enslave you. I know they think this is a joke. Mm -hmm. I know they don't believe nothing I'm saying, but we're going to continue anyway. Yes. In that time, yeah, y'all will take away the finery of the sandals 
and the headbands and the hairnets, the pendants and the bracelets and the veils, the headdresses and the anklets and the combs and the earrings and the necklaces, the rings and the nose rings, the tunics and the mantles and the shawls and the breast ornaments and the mirrors and the linen garments and the turbans and the cloaks. And it shall come to pass that the place where they use perfumes will melt away. And the place where they bound girdles will be scars of a blow. And instead of ring locks of hair, a sheared head. And instead of their going with pride, they will wear sackcloths. This retribution shall be exacted from them, for they have gone astray in their beauty. Okay, so now you've heard the punishment. You're going to lose all of these things, daughters of Zion. So everything that you think is for beauty now will be taken from you and it will be replaced with mourning. That's what the sackcloth is for. Death is coming. So you can either change, right? And come back to your customs and traditions and follow the law, or you will mourn the death of your loved ones. Mm -hmm. If you think this is a lie, and you think that my God is to be mocked, go ahead, now is the time, make your jokes. Mm -hmm. I, and as for the rest of everybody you see here, we will wait. We will take up this law of our own free will. You see, Sister Arivia, she found the answers for herself. And in finding the answers for herself, she came to this conclusion. We'll be right back with the conclusion to this video. All right, we're back. And so now we're getting ready to come to the conclusion because she found this for herself. Whether she wears her hair wrapped or unwrapped, it is completely unto, unto her. Okay? This is my wife. My wife's hair is always wrapped. You won't ever see it unwrapped. Why? There is a difference. This is my wife. She's part of my house. This is our household culture. This is how we live. Arivia, she is my sister. This is my friend. Okay, as my sister and one who has come to learn, she must make the changes to comply to this law of her own free will. If she reads it and she sees it, she has to ask herself, am I going to continue to do what I think is right or am I going to change to follow the instruction to please my God? Mm -hmm. And what was your decision? I am going to follow the instructions <laughs> and please my God. This is how we teach here. You read it, you accept it, you hear it, you accept it, and you do it from this day moving forward. And you know, Rabbi Sheikh, some may be wondering, well, he knew that you was walking in error. So why didn't he say something to you? Okay. So if somebody is walking in error, I am commanded not to stop them from their choice. Okay. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. So whoever counseled her in this ungodly behavior that she's walking in, right? 
She's following that. I cannot interfere because neither stands in the way of the sinner. It's not my job to stand in her way. Now, after she has done what she's wanted to do, mm -hmm. and we're studying, and she sees, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> Does this say something like this about my hair being out? And I say, yes, it does. See, she, I, I can just, I confer with the instructions. I agree with the law. If she doesn't see that it's wrong, she's a sinner and she continues in her way toward whatever it is she's going to get. That doesn't affect me. But I agree with the law. I don't stand in your way. I'm not stopping you from expressing anything you want to express. Mm -hmm. If I don't agree with it, I don't agree with it. Mm -hmm. I have to bring you as a sister and a brother into confrontation with the manuscript, and then you decide. Mm -hmm. After you've seen it for yourself in the law and you've made your decision, then I can decide if I can continue with you. Yes. Because once I see you don't want to agree with the scripture, I cut you off. It's simple as that. The scripture says this. This is clear. We're going to do it this way. And we continue. Mm -hmm. If you say, well, I don't believe <clears throat> in this. I'm done. Because this never asks for your, your belief. This is the law. These are the rules. Belief has nothing to do with it. Correct. You see? Any faith that is asking for your belief in any way is false. I don't have to believe in the rules. If you don't believe in the red light, run it. Mm. When you get into a car accident, you will suffer all the punishments for the crime you've committed. It doesn't require your belief. Mm -hmm. You're afraid of the punishment that comes from breaking this rule. Right. So when she sees the rule, I say, yes, this says this. And I agree with this. It is right. You were wrong for... Yes, I was. <laughs> you was wrong for having your hair out and, mm -hmm. and you know, yeah, you were wrong. Yeah, I was exhibiting haughtiness, not a spirit of haughtiness, a action, a reality of haughtiness. So this is the true way of teaching the law. It has nothing to do with somebody making you obey, you obey or not, your choice. But I will tell you what the outcome of this is. You will get the wrath of the most high, whether you believe or don't believe. It, it but, doesn't matter. But you know, it doesn't just affect us as the daughter of Zion of all of this happening. Look what happened with our men. The choice of your mighty men will be killed by the sword and those who win your victory in the war. Okay, so he's telling you now you're going to lose your men in the war. And this is both sides. Both the government's going to lose men, the best of the best. Mm -hmm. You're going to lose them. You don't think that uh, this concerns you or it won't be close to you that the war is not coming i'm telling you war is coming i mean they're in a war now no, they don't know no they don't see it believe me in america they blind as a bat i'm mm -hmm. telling you there's war coming to american soil you mm -hmm. will see the destruction mm -hmm. and now you have incurred the guilt yes so for those who want to change you can change but i promise you there will be those who change and those who suffer through Mm -hmm. and then change after 
And then there will be those who suffer through it and die. Yes. You know, and so many are like, oh, so many of our young men are dying. So many of our black men are dying. They're ending up in prison. And well, you know what? That has somewhat to do with us because we have been haughty. (laughs) So we're going to get to this last sentence. Okay. So this last sentence, because this is how bad it's going to be. Yes. For all of you daughters of Zion scattered around the world. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this curse is attached to you. It's not attached. This has nothing to do anymore with the men since you are elevated above them. Mm -hmm. This curse attached to you. So let's see what's the rest of this. And the gates of her cities. So the gates of your cities where you are. Shall be wasted. Shall be wasted. And come to an end. And come to an end. And her land will be evacuated and desolate. And your lands, your hometowns, the places where you live will be evacuated and desolate. And in, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> the end. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So for those of you who come and get after this, there's another part. But we're going to let you see this part first because you don't believe what we're talking about. Yes. So you think that this some book we cocked it up. No. (laughs) You think this a book we selling for a profit. No. You think that I'm just some charlatan trying to scam up some money. I'm going to show you the difference. My God real. Mm -hmm. More than all of yours. You will have the opportunity to pray to whomever you believe. And you will see they will not deliver you. This is the covenant. You will know. I promise you. So if you will not obey what I'm teaching you, you will reap these repercussions. You will see them happening where you are. Mm -hmm. Right now we are in a Muslim country. Everybody's pretty modest. And I film inside the home. So it's easier to make this mistake. I don't film outside. So, but it's a perfect example So that you can understand, right? I'm not judging you. You're responsible for judging yourself Mm -hmm. to correct yourself to be in line with this law that I'm reading to you to teach you or suffer the consequences. One step, one step. See you all tomorrow. One step. Yeah, because today was Shabbat. That's another thing. So we at the cool of the evening. It's Shabbat today. All right. So I'll see you all tomorrow.